Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Covenant Presbyterian Church. Um, I'm recording here in the Vail Chapel today for our worship service on April 28th, 2024. It'll be a virtual service for each of us, and we hope that you'll make the, the most out of this wherever you are when you receive it, uh, via either via email or by going to the website. Uh, it's going to be one of those days this time of year in mud season where we do things such as this, but I want to greet you and tell you that it's great to be with you even virtually, and I'm looking so forward to our times together this summer when many of you will be returning back to the valley and we'll be able to spend time together and share our hearts and lives in powerful and personal ways. I believe the Lord has a great summer in preparation for his people here at Covenant throughout the Bell Chapel, the Beaver Creek Chapel, and through the valley in general. And it's great to begin this season now, uh, this last Sunday of April through the end of May, where we're going to be looking in the book of Psalms to get God's wisdom and guidance for life, his security and his nurture, his encouragement. And just as we read the beauty of these chapters that have been written hundreds, thousands of years ago, we see the richness of God's relationship with his people. And I want us to enjoy that and share that vividly right now as uh, we celebrate today, looking at a Psalm that's very familiar, Psalm 23. Uh, and before we do that, we are gonna pray. And um, as we do this, so bow your heads and hearts with me and let's uh, approach the presence of our Lord together. Heavenly Father, your people come before you this morning thanking you, not only for the truth of your word, but for the truth of your presence and your being with us. That you are here to guide us into a relationship with you and that we, your people, are indeed the sheep of your pasture. As we read in just a few moments, we're gonna see how you are our shepherd. You guide us and provide for our lives. You deliver us from evil. You uh, assure us throughout all eternity. And we pray now that as your people, we will rejoice in this time together, that you will be honored and glorified, and that we, your people, be strengthened in our walks of faith. Guide us through this time. Let us see the vistas of your glory. Let us share them. Let us worship you in spirit and truth. And let the name of Jesus Christ go forth because of who you are and all that you are for your people and indeed for everyone who lives upon this planet. We ask this blessing upon each one in Jesus' name, amen. Now another one of our customs as we begin this year, especially in the off season, mud season, shoulder season, we do tend to have communion much more frequently and today will also be a communion service. We will close around the table right here. So if you wanna push pause for a moment, uh, go and get a cup, uh, go and get some bread to make your preparations for yourself, your family, your friends, whoever might be around at this time. Feel free to go ahead and do that. Then I'm gonna read the 23rd Psalm as our guide through the book of Psalms this morning. Very familiar passage. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the quiet waters and he restores my soul. God is indeed the provider of blessing and sustenance throughout our life. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I should walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil because Lord God, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they give me comfort. You will guide us your people through every aspect of life. You never leave us or forsake us, and we're so thankful because of that. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And again, we see not only do you deliver us, but you give us that assurance the good, your goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life, but not only there, it doesn't stop it when the physical body dies, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So let's take a moment. Let's uh, look at these Psalms, ask God to apply them to our own hearts and lives at this time as we reread re and go through this, and we see how God is our provider, 
our spiritual provider, our physical provider. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He uses that visual imagery of we his people being the sheep of his pasture, which we hear that frequently throughout Psalms. And Jesus also referred to us as being his sheep. And he said, the sheep hear my voice. They're not afraid of the shepherd, but if a false shepherd came along, they would know that because they know me. The same thing is true in our lives today as we worship uh, the Lord God. He is my shepherd. He provides. I will not be in want. He makes me to lie down in the green pastures. He gives us sustenance for life, rest, tranquility, food, and above all, relationship that we need for life. He leads us beside the quiet waters. He brings water to quench the thirst of our very souls. How we hunger and thirst after God's righteousness. We sing frequently as the deer pants for the water brook. So our soul pants for the Lord our God. Only the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can be that quiet water that restores our soul. As the deer pants out in the wilderness, so we his people pant, we desire, we thirst for more of a relationship with the living Lord. And in doing so, he does restore, revive, refresh the soul and the body of each man, each woman, each person of all mankind. During this season, we're looking for our souls to be restored. Here in the Vale Valley and Vale and Beaver Creek, the winter season, the ski season, it predicates with Thanksgiving, going into uh, Christmas, then New Year's, and then a hundred days or more of snow and skiing, day in, day out. A hecticness surrounds our valley, and people flock here to enjoy this as a way away from their normal stations of life. But at the end of a long day, at the end of a long season, we can often find ourselves fatigued tired and thinking, I need some rest. It is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that provides that rest because he is the one who provides for us. And this is more of a time of rest for those of us up here in the valley. And we're looking forward to this rest to restore our soul, but also to prepare for the next stage, the next season of life. And I pray in this passage today that wherever you're located across our country or around the world, ask the Lord in these moments as we look at these verses to restore your own soul, to renew your heart with vitality, to give you a refreshing breath of clean air that will restore our soul and bring us into the abundant life that Christ so oftentimes promises to us. Not only does he refresh us, he guides us, and we continue in Psalms this morning. He guides me in paths of righteousness. He leads us as the shepherd leads the sheep to the places that will be the best for the sheep, the places that will be the best for us. And that is the path of righteousness for his name's sake so that he can share with each one of us, I'm leading you into a righteousness that will deliver you from iniquity and it will restore your soul, but it will be also honor and glory to our Lord and Savior when people see that he is the one who's transforming our lives. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we do not fear evil. We all have times of trial and tribulation. Um, that's not related to any specific season of life. That's a daily battle. We see trials about us constantly. We know that there is evil at work in our world. We see hatred and animosity. We see so many things going on in our world right now. I will not fear evil. That's a powerful truth. God desires for us to live in that truth, not fearing the things of this world, not fearing the evil that's present, not fearing the trials and the tribulations, but to walk with hope, security, and assurance of his presence with me, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. As long as we have the presence of God in our life, fear can be cast aside because we see in the New Testament that perfect love casts out fear. 
Our love for Christ is not yet made perfect, but his love for us is. And as we walk in his presence, as we live in his presence, as we go towards his righteousness, we will not be afraid of the things of this world and the things that could limit our own lives. So allow for God to guide each one of us into the paths of his righteousness, not only today, not only this season of life as we're thankful for it, but each and every season we enter, all phases of our life. I know coming up here in the next few weeks, we're going to be coming up to not only um, mud season here in Colorado, but we're going to come up to graduation season. People graduating elementary school, middle school, high school, colleges, universities, um, med schools, law schools. This will be a time of great change and sometimes change, whatever it may be, not just with education, but changes in our stations in life, maybe moving from one place to another things going about it in a different way. Change can sometimes bring with it an understanding of fear, not knowing what's ahead. But here's the guide. He is our shepherd. He leads us. He guides us. He knows what lies ahead, even though we personally don't. And even if we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, another present reality that we all face um, in every aspect of who we are, we don't fear evil because God is with us. His rod and his staff, they give us comfort. We think of God's Holy Spirit as his rod and staff. His spirit indwells the hearts and lives of his people and guides us. And sometimes God directs us by saying, yes, move this direction. Sometimes God directs us by saying, no. Sometimes we have times of difficulties and trials because we've made a, a poor decision. And Maybe we were a little disobedient. Sharice and I have been watching this beautiful series on Netflix called The, Test the Testaments of Moses. It's a great story of the Old Testament. And we see Moses as that man that God has chosen to lead is Israel out of Egypt and to see the struggle in the, in the vividness of the uh, miniseries that we saw, to see the plagues that were cast upon Egypt Things, even though God was directing, didn't go the way Moses always wanted them to or Israel always wanted them to. But even in those trying times, those difficulties, we could sense, they could sense his presence and so can we for our lives today. And sometimes the people got angry. Sometimes Moses got angry. That's something that I'm asking the Lord to do a work in my heart because I know I, I struggle with anger way too frequently. I pray for not only a longer fuse, but that the fuse would never reach the keg that can ignite within me and cause a, a disruption, not only for me, but for anybody who gets close to me sometimes. But in that, knowing that he will answer these prayers and give guidance and directions, I have to look at my own heart and say, I will not fear evil because God is with me. His rod, his staff, they will comfort me and guide me into the phases ahead. So pray and ask God to be your provider. Ask him to be your guide. And then in those times of great difficulty, great conflict, sometimes we come face to face with the enemy. Sometimes we butt heads with each other. We have to look at it this way. God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And unfortunately, sometimes our enemies might even be our best friends, our closest relationships. It needn't be that way, but sometimes God provides a table and brings all to that common place. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. This is a beautiful foreshadowing that we see here in the 23rd Psalm about the beauty of the communion service that I mentioned this morning that we're going to share in just a moment. When he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies, it's just like that last supper, that communion, um, the Passover feast. When Jesus was gathered with his disciples, there were those very close by. And I've used this analogy ever since the Lord blessed us with that trip to Israel a couple of years ago to see that that upper room was not very far. Literally, I'm standing at the, at the altar in the Vale Chapel, as you can tell by the window. Literally, where the front door of the chapel is, as I'm pointing to it out there right now, that is the courtyard where Peter denied Christ three times. That is the place where the disciples 
ran because of fear for their life because they were with Jesus when he was arrested. It's a very short distance and it's the presence of evil around us as it was that night. Sometimes we seem oppressed and weighted down, but this table that God provides is right where we live each and every day. He anoints our head with oil, our cup overflows with his goodness. All of this indicates that he is the deliverer and by being our deliverer, he brings us to the table of solitude, of solace, where we see the body of Christ given for us again. We see the blood of Christ shed for us. And that's a promise that we carry each and every day that gives us a little bit more peace and hope throughout our existence. And then he ends this passage, this great chapter. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. As long as we physically live God's presence, His goodness will follow us all those days, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We see the eternity present and the eternity future promise of God's relationship for His people, and all of that is because of the table that He prepared for us, our Lord and Savior, given on our behalf. I pray that this passage, this 23rd Psalm, will give you peace and assurance for your lives today, that you will feel like God is your, indeed your provider and he's guiding us into the fullness of our relationship with Christ. He's delivering us from the enemy and he's giving us assurance that it's not only temporary while we live here, but an assurance of eternity for we spend that in the presence of Christ. We're gonna bow, we're gonna ask God's blessings on the bread and on the cup we're going to eat and drink, so as I'm praying, uh, maybe it's before or after, you might want to hit the pause button, go and get the cup, the bread, and bring it back if you haven't done so already. But we are going to pray now, so bow with me, wherever you might be right now. As Lord Jesus, we come before you thanking you for the bread and the cup. For the bread is your body given for us. You did not withhold all that you are. You gave yourself not only a spiritual aspect, but a physical aspect, an emotional aspect, a wellness aspect, as you gave your body for each of us. We thank you for the bread, and as we eat in just a moment, we thank you that your goodness and your mercy is applied to our hearts through your body given for us. We thank you for the cup, the cup of the new covenant, your blood shed for each one of us. And just as we declared this a few short weeks ago when we celebrated the Easter story, the resurrection, where you were victorious over sin in the grave, your blood was shed for our forgiveness and you rose victorious to assure that the bread and cup would have meaning not only in that day and time, but today in this day and time now and forevermore. Bless the cup, bless the bread. May each one be used to your honor and glory. And we pray your blessings upon these elements and upon your people as we receive them this morning. And we thank you for this journey together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So on the night that Christ was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it and blessed it. He gave it to his disciples. So I take a small wafer this morning and tell you that this bread right here represents the body of Christ given for us. Jesus blessed it just as we did earlier. He broke it, he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is no longer the bread of the Passover, but this represents my body being given for you. Then he instructs the disciples around the table in the upper room as he instructs us today to take this bread and eat from the bread of life. And as we as people ingest this bread, it quenches not only a physical hunger but a spiritual hunger it renews our soul, it restores our soul, 
Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because of who Christ is and what he's done for us. And then after the dinner, the Bible says he took the cup. Today I use a single goblet. I don't know what you have at home, but rather than the little cups that we normally prepare, I hold this maybe as Jesus held the goblet that night. And he gave this drink to his disciples. And he said, this is now my blood given for you. This is the cup of the new covenant. And he instructed all the disciples to take and to drink from the cup of life. And so he instructs us today, take your cup. Look deep into the richness of forgiveness. See how his blood paid the price for my sin, for your sin, that we might be a part of the family of God and then drink with gladness in your heart. Again, the truth we've shared this morning, I read the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil because he is with me. His rod and his staff, they bring comfort. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May this psalm rain upon the hearts of God's people today in worship. May we open our hearts to receive it that our soul might be blessed, our families might be blessed, we might understand even more of the fullness of the blessings of Christ. And because of all that he's done, we pray again and honor our Lord and Savior, saying, Lord Jesus, thank you for you are worthy to be worshiped and praised. You are the Passover lamb. You are the one who has given your body and blood. You are the redeemer. You are our deliverer. You are the one that guides us into the pastures of life. You are the one that restores the souls of your people. May your presence imbue each one this morning. May we sense our physical, spiritual, and emotional wellness through your Holy Spirit. May your name be glorified through the lives of your people as we live boldly for you, giving you thanks and praise as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And now again we say, Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are and for all that you've done for each one of us and indeed all of your sheep about this planet. Bless your people now and send us into the fields of life. For your honor and glory we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, what a pleasure it's been to be with you this morning. Looking forward to our time. Uh, next Sunday, we're live again here at the Bell Chapel and Beaver Creek Chapel. And I know many of you won't be here next week, next month. But we're getting closer to Father's Day weekend when summer starts. And we're so looking forward to seeing people live and in person again, to sharing this joy that we have wherever we are, whenever we're speaking about it, because God in his omnipotence reigns upon his people. Let that be so wherever you are right now. Enjoy life, live abundantly for the honor and glory of God the Father. I pray now that God our Heavenly Father will bless you and keep you. I pray that he makes his face to smile upon you. And I pray he directs our paths unto his righteousness for his honor and glory. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we do not fear because God is with us. His rod and staff, they comfort us. 
And surely his goodness and his mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And we, his people, will dwell in his house forever and forever. To God be the glory, great things he has done. This blessing is prayed upon you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful Sunday. God's blessings upon each one.